In part three, looking at Alex Hayes' drawings, we're going to talk to you about the top of the backswing. In the second stage, we talked about the golf swing as a big wheel. The axle of the, of the wheel was the body, and the arms were the spokes. Now, those two spokes are glued together in the case of the golfer, and it means that when the shoulder hits the throat, the arms roll over each other. So I'm going to demonstrate that down the line with the six iron, just to clarify. Here's my posture, my axle, my arms, and the club of the spoke. The left shoulder coils to the throat. Now, if I stand up, six, five, four, three, five with three with driver, up to axe, you can see that the shoulder has coiled across the throat. That's the power move. If I lean forward and I turn the shoulder a bit flat, doesn't look much until I stand up. I can see that I'm way below plane. That's the power slot. Conversely, if you're a two-plane swinger, the club will be above the plane. Doesn't look too bad until I stand up, and there it is above the plane. So, the key feeling at the top, whatever club you're using, is the left shoulder gets to the throat. And you can check by standing up. Now, if you don't own your own explainer, then the best thing is to practice in front of a mirror. So if I turn to face the camera where you are, I can show you this drill. I'm standing up, the axle of the wheel is vertical, perpendicular. My arms are going to function in this plane. And here's the golf club. So here we go. This is my best shoulder coil. The left shoulder goes to the throat. I'm in the slot. I'm in plane. This is the shoulder turned a little bit flat and across the chest. My arms have rolled and my wrists haven't hinged. Here's me turn my shoulder a bit above plane. My wrists hinge freely, but my forearms don't rotate as much. The beauty is, when you coil the left shoulder to the throat, when you get that really strong wheel mechanism, you know that the forearms and the wrists have loaded as they should. The shoulder coil loads the forearms, hinges the wrist, and very much controls the length of the backswing. Now, a lot of you will think that at the top of the golf swing, the club has to be pointing down the target line. Well, that might happen with the driver or some clubs, but it really isn't an issue. Let me show you what happens when I use the golfing wheel with a wedge. Here's my pitching wedge, one of the short clubs in the bag. And I coil. That's as far as I can go. If I stand up, I'm more flexible, I can, go, I can go further. But when you use a wedge club, the limit of your swing is about here. If I turn and face the camera, you can see that more clearly. So here's a good posture. Turn the shoulder under the throat. That's a full wedge swing. If I stand up a little bit, give myself six arm posture, I go a bit further. If I go to driver posture, then I might get to horizontal. So don't worry too much about where the club is pointing at the top of the backswing. The issue is, is it in plane? Here is a quarter swing in plane, half a swing in plane, three quarter and full. Going down the line, here's quarter swing in plane, half a swing, three quarter and full. Where the club is pointing and aiming is not really the issue. The issue is what you're doing. If your shoulder is calling to your throat properly, then you can trust that the spokes of the arms are probably working well as well. So just to recap, if your posture is good, the act of your swing works properly. If your grip is good, your wrists and your forearms and your arms work properly. So whatever club you're using, the backswing coil is always going to be left shoulder under throat. But you'll find that the length of that coil will vary with the club and the plane of that coil will vary with the club. So there's no such thing as a groove. There's a power move where the shoulder hits the throat, but that is health has lots of variety.